Thank you, Chairman. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> um, I'm sorry, I changed my topic. Uh, the reason is that I think the schedule made some mistake. Um, before, before the Congress, we held a seismic workshop <coughs> on, uh, on tall buildings. <coughs> and by the seismic design group of CTVH. So <clears throat> not, um, the year before, we decided to, to submit a, a summary paper on this topic, performance-based seismic design international practices. And <clears throat> the workshop, uh, there are there are rep representatives of eight countries participated, including Australia and plus New Zealand, Chile, China, Indonesia, Japan, Korea, Philippines, and United States. <coughs> and we found that <coughs> through the workshop, all countries have codes that cover basic seismic design requirements, mm -hmm. including minimum acceptable natural strength and stiffness, minimum acceptable detailing practices. And performance-based seismic design <coughs> are required um, for for and regular buildings by China and Japan. And performance-based seismic design is also <coughs> regarded as alternative design approach in Indonesia, Philippines, and United States. And the goal, and the consistent goals of performance-based seismic design <coughs> are, firstly, a decision-maker states a, declare, a desire that the building be able to perform in a certain way, including protective life safety, minim minimize potential repair cost, minimize disruption of use, and secondly, the engineer uses his or her skill to provide a design that will be capable of achieving these objectives. <coughs> and the seismic de demand <coughs> are <coughs> are defined as a defined uh, as frequent earthquake, which commonly around five years return period, extreme red earthquake, which commonly 1,000 to 2,500 years return period, and intermediate, which, which is commonly around 500 year return period. <coughs> The performance objectives <coughs> including design ground shaking and acceptable performance level and the design shaking. There are several performance levels They are operational, immediate occupancy, usually under frequent earthquake, life safety, usually under intermediate earthquake, and collapse prevention, usually under extremely rare earthquake. And three-dimensional linear elastic model of structures 
are usually employed <coughs> for frequent and intermediate, in, intermediate earthquake <coughs> uh, effect, effective analysis. And this kind of elastic model <coughs> is normally used to initially proportion elements. And three-dimensional nonlinear model of structures <coughs> are usually used for structural analysis and extremely rare earthquake. And dynamic time history analysis is used. And static or pushover <coughs> uh, static <coughs> analysis is also used in Chile, China, and Japan. And this slide shows <coughs> Japan requirements. <coughs> um, allowable stress uh, and horizontal load carrying capacity calculation, response and limit capacity calculation <coughs> are <coughs> the seismic design methods for building with height less than 60 meters. And if a building, if the height of building is larger than 60 meters, the time history dynamic response analysis is required. And design review and evaluation by the panel, by <coughs> panel members and special permission are required. And two <coughs> levels of earthquake uh, is normally used. One is rare earthquake. <coughs> the return period is five, 50 years. The acceleration is <coughs> of earthquake is 250 scale. The other label of earthquake is extreme rate earthquake. The return period is 500 years. <coughs> and the acceleration is 1,250 years. This table shows the performance objectives um, specified in Japan. We may find that. And the first level earthquake or rare earthquake, <coughs> the damage of structure is limited. The drift story is limited to one over 200 or, or less. And the stress in each structural element <coughs> should be within the short-term allowable stress or less. And an extreme rare earthquake, the <coughs> structure, the structural collapse should be limited, and the story, interstory drift, you limit to one over one, one over 100 or less, and the story ductility factor, <coughs> you limit to two or less, and the ductility factor of, of each structural element should be less than four. This is a uh, Korean <coughs> seismic performance objectives. We found they <coughs> define in general two performance level. One is optional and the other is knife safety for three kinds of buildings, one building structures um, for ordinary structure, important structure or safety critical structures. And the return period for different <coughs> important structures and optional or life safety for optional or life safety performance level are different. <coughs> 
And we, we found that in, in Korea, <coughs> the seismic intensity of five years return, or five, uh, 500 years return is 0.11 G, 0.11 G. Um, for cities, so in Chen and Pusan, yeah. <coughs> and in Indonesia, <coughs> in nineteen seventy, <coughs> equivalent nitro force it procedure is used for earthquake resistance design. And in 1987, <coughs> linear response spectrum analysis is employed for earthquake recent design. And in 2011, performance-based seismic <coughs> design approach is, is employed following peer TPI. I will <coughs> explain later on. And Chile, Chile has several loading and design codes differentiated by their function and structural system. The loading codes are <coughs> uh, and CH433 for residential and office buildings and 3745 for base isolated buildings and 2369 for industrial facilities. And performance-based design <coughs> is not <coughs> specified in the codes right now, but it is used on a limited number of spatial projects and nonlinear analysis models um, <coughs> for pushover or time history analysis is, are used to identify failure mode and performance level of buildings. <coughs> and this slide shows the acceleration <coughs> spectra specified in <coughs> the various Chilean codes for base isolation buildings, residential office buildings, and industrial buildings. For example, <coughs> the Chilean code for <coughs> residential buildings, <coughs> the model Spectrum analysis <coughs> is used, and elastic response is reduced by <coughs> by factor relevant to probably the type of structures. And base shear <coughs> is limited; should be larger than minimum base shear. And drip, as in <coughs> story drip, interstory drip is controlled at the center of mass and at the perimeter of the buildings. In addition, the base shear <coughs> of building is limited in range, in some range. And if a base <coughs> shear is out of range, forces and displacements must be scaled to the exceeded limit. And the minimum base shear for normal buildings <coughs> should be is five or five to six or seven percent of a weight of a building. And 
And in Australia, seismic design procedures specify in a code. And the life safety and the collapse prevention are the preliminary performance objectives. Four space design approach, depending on building importance level, level of seismic hazard, site condition, and building height. And concrete and steel code specifies the building requirements depending on the level of ductility demand. And largely, <coughs> a prescriptive code with some performance based measures in the context of life safety and, and collapse prevention. Recognition of four levels of importance with seismic hazards corresponding to return periods, typically between 500 to 2,500 years. Non-linear static <coughs> pushover analysis allowed for obtaining structural performance factor and ductility factor. And serviceability limit state <coughs> performance objective is considered only for buildings of a highest importance level to remain serviceable immediately after no return period 500 years, which is 500 years earthquake shaking. Limits <coughs> storage drift typically to 1.5% of story height, primarily for maintaining structural integrity rather than limiting damage. Now let's turn to <coughs> the peer TBI guidance in in United States, developing in states. The goal of this guidance guideline is to provide guidance for the seismic design and review of tall buildings to stream to streamline the design and review process and to lead to cons consensus on the best practice that's widely supported. This guideline is a rule book to again with no rules. In this guideline, this <coughs> the service earthquake is 43 year, year return period and the performance Go uh, <coughs> including does not compromise structure safety, repair not required for occupancy, essentially elastic response. The maximum considered earthquake is 975 year return period earthquake. And under this earthquake, the performance goal of earthquake uh, of building is a minor risk of collapse and moderate residual drift, which is less than 1%. And 3D nonlinear response history analysis is usually performed. And in China, <coughs> performance-based seismic design is specified in the code for seismic design of buildings. And three levels of earthquakes are, are defined, <coughs> which are the minor earthquake, which is 50 years return period, the moderate earthquake, which is 470 years return period, the, service, the severe earthquake, which is around 2,000 years return period. <coughs> the target performances of buildings <coughs> are, are like no damage under minor earthquakes. The building should be repairable under moderate earthquakes and no collapse or collapse prevention under severe earthquakes. And And four levels <coughs> of performance objectives are defined on various earthquakes. For example, performance objective level three, the building should has no 
good damage and minor earthquake should have only minor earth damage and moderate earthquake should have only moderate earthquake damage and a severe earthquake and the building should be reusable after strengthening. That's a objective level three, performance objective level three. Yeah. And this table shows the interstory drip requirements of various performance objectives. <coughs> for example, for performance objective label three, the building, the interstory drip of a building should be less, much less than elastic limit, elastic limit, and the minor earthquake should be less than two times of elastic limit and the moderate earthquake should less than four times elastic limit and the severe earthquake. That's for objective level three. Yeah. Now, what, what's the limit of relative interstory drifts? In China, <coughs> the, for concrete reinforced, reinforced concrete frame, the elastic limit is one over 550, and the plastic limit is one over 50. And for reinforced concrete <coughs> shear wall structure, the elastic limit is one of 1,000, and the plastic limit is one of 120. And for steel structures of various building, buildings, the elastic limit is one over two, 250, and the plastic limit is one over 50. And I'm going to give you an example of performance-based design. <coughs> on the Convention Center for Shanghai Expo 2010. <coughs> this is a <coughs> convention like a um, uh, building. Yeah. So there are many, lots of conference halls and, and lots, it's a several stories, lots span building and and make a steel frame is used for the structure. And BRB, buckling strain braces are, are used. <coughs> it's a structure under construction. And we found that some BRBs are, are used <laughs> for this structure. This table shows the target seismic performance for this building. <coughs> for example, at the minor earthquake, the global structure should, ha should have no any damage and, and the interstory drift should limit to within one over 300 and the colon spins, ordinary braces and BRB should be inelastic. And then the moderate earthquake, <coughs> the global behavior of structure should be repairable and the interstory drift should be limited within one over 100. And colon spins, braces should be in elastic. But BRB can be in plastic. And, and a severe earthquake, <coughs> Collapse of a building is prevented and the interstory drift is limited within one over 50. Uh, and columns is allowed to have limited plastic deformation and also means you limit the, the plastic deformation should be limited. And, and, we, and we found that if, if we use BRB to, to replace the normal concentral <coughs> braced frames, 
the steel consumption can be reduced by 1,000 tons. So the performance-based seismic design. Now I come to my summary. Performance-based seismic design allows for cost savings and better understanding of a building's performance. Thank you. Thank you for your attention.